Hello, everybody. Very welcome. Nice to see lots of friends here that I've met over the years in my career. So, what am I going to talk about? If I can get started, I'll tell you. I think I'll have to put on my glasses. I don't mind if I put on my glasses. I'm going to talk about consensus and to present the consensus management model of healthcare. It seems very dry, I'm sure you'll agree, but hopefully I'll try and let you see the advantages to this programme and the introduction of values into a consensus model. I'll discuss how the model may be used to assist managers in leading their organisation through a values approach. I developed this model uh, a few years ago and it was developed from three sets of findings. I undertook both quantitative and qualitative research with healthcare managers in this country, in 60 of the acute care hospitals. I interviewed 50 directors of nursing and talked to them about their views on consensus. The managers were given a survey and I also interviewed some managers. And then I undertook a literature review in 2015 and um, this was published early this year, early last year, in a book chapter authored by Anders Ortenblend titled Management Innovations in Healthcare. So you might see it sometime. So I'm going to ask you then, is there any agreement about consensus? No, there isn't. There is no agreement or no definition about consensus. There's nothing that tells us what the, con what the concepts are, what the values are, what the definitions are. So that is why consensus is so difficult to achieve. But it can be achieved with a lot of effort. So consensus management does encourage multidisciplinary cooperation, collaboration and enhanced organisational performance. The first time that consensus management was mooted and introduced was in the, in the NHS in the 1980s. And it did produce multidisciplinary cooperation, collaboration and better performance for a period of time. But research showed within a few years we had just, uh, everybody had a veto. So everybody was involved, literally taking the word consensus. So, of course, it didn't work. And um, what we also found that uh, uh, Floyd and Woolridge were the authors who first started to look at consensus management. And I actually looked at their work and took something from that. And they found that there were four levels of managers within an organisation. Level one, they had a common understanding and a shared commitment to the goals of the organisation. Level two, well, they had blind devotion and ill-formed. So they were very devoted to their manager and to their organisation. Level three, they were informed sceptics, but unwilling to act. And I think we have quite a few of those around today as well. Sceptical, don't want to change anything, don't want to introduce anything new. And then level four, where there's a low level of shared understanding and commitment to the organisation's goals and strategies. And we're not sure why this low level has occurred, whether it was through lack of training or lack of involvement, which was more, uh, more to the point. So there are some negative consequences. And the negative consequences arose from research where it was shown that uh, slow decision-making and lowest common denominator decision-making arose where there was consensus management. And this led to a lack of accountability and poor resolution of difficult problems. So how are these concepts that we're talking about here made visible in the practice of nursing and midwifery? We encourage cooperation amongst our teams. Do we do that? Do we encourage collaboration between doctors and nurses and between other members of the multidisciplinary teams that we work with? We're, we're improving, I think. And have all decisions, all the dis disciplines working, the need to enhance their own performance? Do they feel that their performance is good enough and that the organisation's performance is good enough? And we saw from Philip's uh, 
figures here that obviously not, that we have a long way to go yet in relation to this. So, other results from poor results from consensus were identified by uh, Harrison and Pollitt. And they found that where consensus was uh, practiced, that there was pluralism. Nobody was accountable. Going back to the HSE, and I'm sure uh, to the uh, NHS, we have some similar problems. Uh, no single person was in charge, and this resulted in no accountability. There was reactiveness, where we reacted, and you talked about that, Philip, a moment ago, we react to difficult situations, and this leads to ad hoc, uh, an ad hocness, I suppose, about it. it. Incrementalism. Everything is done piecemeal. Uh, managers are slow to propose changes or to change anything that's in existence. And finally, introversion. I think we're good at that. We take an inward approach to our work, which serves us well. It serves the managers well. It serves our peers well. But it doesn't serve our patients or our clients. We're looking inwards. And that, I think, we will hopefully change. So health services delivery does place emphasis on strategic involvement and agreement of strategy. And I believe that for consensus to occur, senior managers need to invest time and effort and energy in ensuring that the organisation's strategy is known and accepted. I found that this process needs people to be involved, to be invited to be involved, and not to feel I, they're involving me, but it's too late. The decisions have already been made. So involvement in every single aspect of our work, our organisation, and in the delivery of our care. Um, now, the nursing and midwifery um, department, uh, the, the chief nurse in the Department of Health and her team have developed a set of values, values for nurses and midwives in Ireland. I am focusing on those because I think they're a wonderful thing. They were developed in collaboration <coughs> with nurses around the country. And from this, they identified, the nurses identified, and midwives, what they wanted, how they wanted to deliver care, and what were the most important values that they considered. I'll let you read that. So we ask ourselves then, what values do we believe in as individuals? What do we demonstrate in our practice, in education or in management? What are the work ethics that we believe in? Do we work? Are we diligent? Are we professional in our approach? Do we live or support an environment that encourages, that prioritises, that develops others, that involves others. That will lead to good values, to a good, strong organisation, and to commitment. Are we acting in a professional manner? So this leads us then to culture, because we know that values and culture are intertwined. Culture is viewed as a critical driver of norms and the way we do things around here. And this was first identified by Dylan Kennedy. And I think it's a very good one. It's still, it has stood the test of time. This is the way we do things around here and we don't want to change and don't ask us to change. I found in my research that shared cultural values are associated with commitment, self-confidence and ethical behaviour, as well as involvement. Culture is constantly being reinforced to employees behaving in a similar manner to their colleagues. Now, I think those, particularly the first and the third, should set up alarm bells for us. Is that the way we want to continue? The way we always did and the way our colleagues uh, want us to do it. So, strategic involvement along with con commitment to the organisation, with a strong culture, 
will ensure that care is delivered in the most efficient and effective way possible. Strategic consensus is present when high levels of strategic involvement are combined with high commitment to the organisation's strategy and where a strong culture exists. Strong culture promotes involvement, collaboration and participation. You ask what is a strong culture? It's a culture where it's an organisation where the culture is visible, where everybody speaks out and is allowed to speak, where there's involvement. That's a strong culture and where there's ethics and values that are visible and visibly seen, where there's an expression of commitment there's work ethics, there's diligence, there's passion and drive. And these um, concepts were noted by the chief nurse in her report. There's professionalism in our approach and we embrace change with resilience. I think resilience is a word that we don't use very much, but it helps us to bounce back when we have difficulties and to introduce change. Well, certain influences work together to form an organisation's culture, and one such is the organisation's values. And this is uh, Mark White, who I'll mention later. Values determine the individual's action system. Emphasis placed on ethical dimensions that encompass such concepts as accountability and professional standards of care. And values underpin our professional practice rights. So culture plays a powerful part in the organisation. Um, I found the cultural values to be commitment, self-confidence and ethical behaviour. If we look at, for example, our staff nurses or CNSs, they collaborate with multidisciplinary teams. They coordinate expert care in a professional manner. They use knowledge wisely using evidence-based practice. They encourage patients to participate in their own care. So we are using a lot of values in our care delivery that we may not be aware of or think about. Now, codes of conduct are available and used in most countries now, particularly for nurses and doctors. And this code of professional conduct and ethics was developed by the Nursing and Midwifery Board and published in 2014. And five principles, and these are the five principles. Do we exercise all of those? Respect for dignity, exercise professional <coughs> responsibility and accountability in a quality way, trust, and as been mentioned earlier, we have to build trust. I think we have, in many cases, our trust has been diminished because of problems that have arisen in our organisations. This has to be rebuilt again, and we have to collaborate with others in this. Do we advocate actions to create a culture of learning and development? And do we use values in doing this? The chief nurse in the report that they've just published, the values that they identified for nurses are, uh, that nurses identified themselves as being the three most important values, not to mention a lot of others, but compassion, care and commitment. Compassion, care and commitment. And in this context, compassion means showing empathy and respect for the person. As you can see, the dignity of the person is upheld. We uphold trust, we provide care. That's based on integrity, genuineness, kindness, comfort, and we're there. And presence was mentioned already. We're there with our patients, we're seen and we're visible. I think that's a very good definition, I, I hope you you, you agree with me there. There's a lot of um, areas included in compassion, and I think compassion has probably been lost a little bit um, in recent years, maybe from too busy, too much work, etc. The second identified was care. Care means having the required knowledge, skills, and competence to connect with a person, listening to them, collaborating with them, um, acting in a professional manner, being responsible for our actions, being accountable for our actions, demonstrate, demonstrating quality in leadership and representing dignity of the patient above all. But while doing that, we inspire trust and confidentiality in our work. Commitment was mentioned already, and I'll let you read that as well. 
and this is from the Chief Nurse's report. So if we take those three together and we looked at we look at advanced nurse and midwifery practice, um, then could we ask how are those commitments, uh, uh, those values, those three values particularly, how are they evident in the care that advanced nurse and midwife practice delivers? Can anybody give me a, a, an example of how they demonstrate this? Well, we've just mentioned accountability. They're accountable for their actions. They have a vision for practice, a vision for their practice that is beyond the norm and what's available now. They're accountable. They're responsible to patients, to the organisation and to themselves. They demonstrate expert skill in delivery of care. They protect the public and they set high standards. And I think that their work uh, is significant in looking at this. So, finally, I want to talk a little bit about values in action. This is a project that was developed by the HSE uh, with Herrero and Mark White, who's here, one of our colleagues, and speaking today. And it looked at values in action. And we asked, what is that? Living for our staff, for ourselves, for those we serve, as part of our mission to build a better health service. Values are translated from words into behaviours. What behaviours are in use? Working within our scope of practice, developing a nurse-patient relationship, being open and embracing change, all part of the values in action. And they developed the vision, the mission and the values of for the organisations and leading statements to um, identify those particular areas. So the vision uh, first, um, they believe that this can lead to cultural change within the organisation. We do talk about vision and mission and values, but I think what they have done is identified statements that will help the nurse and staff working in the organisations, how we can just apply those. The Values in Action project was developed in 2016 and they believe that professional values will guide our actions. Values are our compass. It sets our standards for guiding our own behaviour. And this includes making our values visible, as I mentioned earlier, talking about them and, as a result, helping to change behaviour. The mission, well, we've talked about missions before. Um, this explains the organisation's reason for existence, what it does and what its overall intentions are. From that, statements were developed, uh, such as making sure that we display dignity, compassion, justice um, and advocacy in our work. And finally, the values are of the organisation, the statement that it's what the organisation believes in, how it will behave in the future, and it helps to create a moral compass for the organisation. So in the pursuit of this vision, actions will be guided by the values of integrity, excellent teamwork and collaboration, respect, compassion, innovation, stewardship and diversity. There's an awful lot more values in there than I uh, have ever put together, but um, I think if we get some of them, we're doing very, very well. So consensus model then looks at the commitment we have to our organisation, the level of involvement we have in the organisation, the type of organisational culture, is it a strong one? And then we have good consensus management. But no, we haven't, because we have to include in that our values all of the values that uh, we know uh, are, and Tom says, time up. So thank you very much. Thank you.